Hello everyone. My name is Nish Joseph. I'm the engineering manager here at Leap Australia. And as part of this Converge virtual user conference, I'll be presenting on the mechanical innovations as part of the ANSYS 2019 R3 release. So let's start with some of the changes made for the user experience in this release. Users can now launch mechanical directly from the Windows Start menu. This has been a feature that is requested for many of our customers who use Mechanical has their primary application. This is part of ANSYS' effort to make the user experience more mechanical-centric. As many of you may be aware, previous release saw a significant change in the user interface in ANSYS Mechanical. And as part of this user interface, one of the focuses in, by ANSYS is the customizability. Each of us have our own take on how environments need to be set up. And having a greater control in our simulation environment would extend productivity. And with this release, you have more options to customize in your ribbon, your combo boxes, selectable options, and slider controls. All options are now capable of being added to the quick access toolbar. If you're like me and you use a lot of keyboard shortcuts, you would be happy to know that with this release, there are more options to customize as part of the keyboard assignments. These include items in the context tab, user defined buttons, and ACT extensions. The quick launch feature in the new user interface is something that I find to be extremely useful. And I hope many of you are using this, especially if you're trying to get around the new user interface and you're trying to locate things. Just searching for what you would like will give you the path and location where you could launch it. And also you could directly click on it to, to get the desired action. And as part of this release, you also get results from the pane toolbar as part of the search feature. In ANSYS Mechanical, the outline solver and insert groups are always visible even in your context tabs. And as part of the improvements in the customizability in this release, users can now choose to hide this in various context tabs and make it available only in the home tab. Users who use MAPDL command objects as part of their simulation setup will now find that it supports code completion and command highlighting, greatly improving the user experience in setting up these objects in your simulation. So moving on to some of the pre-processing enhancement as part of this release. SpaceLim users will now find that they have a body filter that was previously not available as part of their selection criteria. There's been an improvement with beam processing in SpaceLim where you could now select a beam and, and, and obtain its mass properties. You could also orient beams to cylinders. And if you use the power select option inside SpaceClaim, you could now also select beams based on length. SpaceClaim also now has the option to display thick beams and shells, similar to the experience you have in ANSYS Mechanical. The error limit for Mechanical is now set as aggressive compared to standard in previous releases. The aggressive method has a stricter requirement for mesh quality, which leads to better solution accuracy. This is a result of the improvements internally to obtain better quality meshes inside ANSYS Mechanical. As a result of this change, some users might find geometries that previously meshed in older versions of ANSYS now fail. These typically would involve really dirty geometries. In such cases, the recommendation is to switch the error limit back to the standard mechanical and remesh the part. At the R2 release, ANSYS introduced a new technology known as batch connections that greatly improved the workflow for fabricated structures and improving the quality of the grid. As part of this release, there are further improvements to this technology. One such improvement is selective connections. Here, users can select various surfaces and mesh them selectively. As a note, this operation is not recorded and if users wish to make this persistent, would have to enable worksheet meshing. Another area of improvement as part of the batch connections is the repair topology. With this, users are presented with the ability to merge faces, remove thin faces, and remove sharp angle faces. The merge face option also has the additional option to limit the scope to specific faces based on either geometry selection or multiple name selections. Starting with this release, users now have the option to generate map meshes in conjunction with batch connections further improving the quality of your grids. Working with very large models can be quite challenging at times, especially when things don't quite work out as planned. This is one of the areas ANSYS has been working to improve the user experience. With this release, users now have the option to find unconnected faces through the graphical window. 
This essentially selects all unconnected faces within a tolerance. Once these are selected, users can then create name selections and to further isolate and diagnose these problematic areas. So moving on to some of the enhancements within the mechanical application. In previous releases, the cross-section property for line bodies was read-only. Starting with this release, users can now select any available cross-section and assign it to the line body. Those of you who use solution combination would have previously noted that user-defined results was not available. In R3, users can now use user-defined results to query results in the file data that are not exposed as a standard result. At the start of the year, ANSYS introduced a new feature within the solver known as the inverse option for static structural. This feature tries to address the requirement where the deform shape and the loads acting on it are known and the user would like to recover the reference geometry. So this feature is now available inside ANSYS Mechanical. And as part of this, there is a beta release where once the re reference geometry is recovered, the user can then apply ad additional or alternative loads and to further deform the structure and, and study it. So moving on to some of the core solver enhancements within this release. This release saw the introduction of a new local convergence check to help users tackle difficult nonlinear problems. This convergence check is essentially designed to prevent oscillations of the contact reaction forces and improve accuracy. This is done by checking the forces of the current iteration to its previous iteration and see if the difference is smaller than a user-defined convergence tolerance. In the given example, compared to the result from the R19 O release, one can see the new release has a significant improvement in the reaction forces with the increment in time. So staying with the contact technology, another area that saw significant improvement with this release was in relation to the DMP solver. In previous releases, the pair-based contacts were separated based on disconnected regions and no further splitting occurred with essentially causing an imbalance in solvers. In this release, however, pair splitting continues even after the initial splitting to produce even smaller subpairs, therefore producing better balance among cores. So in the example that is seen in this slide, uh, on the left-hand side, you could see uh, a tire example where it was only split into two separate discon in disconnected regions. However, in the, the same model with the uh, 2019 R3 release, you can see there's a greater amount of splitting causing a, uh, that for higher core counts improves the performance. And this is seen in the runtime where there's almost a 22% increase in performance for this particular model, just changing the release to the current release. On the performance note, as many of our customers know, ANSYS has a very strong commitment to improve the solver performance across the entire suite of products with every release. And this is continues to be the case even for the R3 release. So just looking at the sparse direct solver, compared to the previous releases, you can see there is an improvement, especially at higher core counts compared to the old releases. In terms of the PCG solver, you can see there, with compared to the R2 release, there's also a significant improvement. In terms of the block launcher eigen solver, a similar trend is noticed where at very high core counts you can see a significant improvement with all the previous releases and compared to R19 for example there's a huge jump even at smaller core counts. So that concludes this presentation. If there's any information that is of interest to you or you would like to have more information on please let us know and we are happy to help you out and to give you and provide you with more details. Over the next few weeks, ANSYS will be providing more information and in much greater depth. Stay tuned and thank you for watching.